Good evening to the Brookfield Selectmen's meeting of Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. Would you join me in saluting? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for I would like a motion to approve an expense warrant from 22520 for $273,410.51 and a payroll warrant for 22620 for $160,297.51. You have that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'd like a motion to approve Selectman's meeting minutes from 2-11-20. You have that motion? Second. And, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then to acknowledge other minutes and reports from other departments. Well, there there we, aren't any that's we, we don't have any. Oh, we don't have any. All right. Okay. We have an announcement. Uh, a reminder that a winter parking ban is in effect through April 1st from the hours of 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. There should be no parking on any streets. Also, snow or ice removal from driveways, sidewalks, or private property shall not be plowed, shoveled, or blown across any public way, street, or roadway. Senator Gobi's aide will hold office hours in the Brookfield Town Hall from 2 to 3 p.m. Wednesday, March 4th. All are welcome. Do you have any announcements? Either one nope. of you? Okay. Something on your our first thing on our agenda is the financial report with our account large. Hello. Great. So, a few things to go over tonight. First, um, from the treasurer, um, Sarah Hunter, who was not able to attend, to attend tonight. She is um, getting over the flu and chose not to come and infect everybody. Um, we appreciate I, that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so do I. I spoke to her right before I got here. She wanted me to let everybody know that from the treasurer's side, bank reconciliations are done through December with the exception of a few tax collector accounts and they're only due to timing issues, which she is working on now. The vendor account had to have an outstanding checklist created from scratch, and that is currently done through October. Um, she, they, she and her team started on the January reconciliations today. Um, Sarah and I are meeting on Friday to work together to start balancing our books together, um, hopefully through December. Um, and we're gonna work on the tax collector issues um, that she's having timing issues with together because I've already matched up all of the tax collector accounts when I posted the receivables okay. and that's all she had. Can I just revisit that? Oh, sure. You're talking faster than I can Sorry. Listen. That's okay. <laughs> so back to the beginning of that laundry list. Yep. So Look. she did bank reconciliations from the treasurer's side. Okay. Through December with the exception of a few tax collector um, accounts. So, and that's through December 2018? Yes. Um, and you're currently, from your side, reconciled through the end of that year? So, on my side, I have currently reconciled the general ledger through the end of fiscal year 19, with the exception of a few issues I found on Thursday. Um, so, as soon as Sarah is ready, I'm going to start balancing my books to hers. Okay. So, if she's got her bank recon through December, when do you think you all would be able to start? Or once she gets the portion done with the tax collector, is that a, a point at which it would be worth starting to get that front half of the year yep. done? Okay. So we're hoping that we're going to make progress on Friday together. Um, okay. I'm going to give her what I did for receivables in hopes that that will mesh with what she's finding in the bank. So. The issues that she found, she said, is basically just the packs that were turned over from the collector to the treasurer. The dollar amounts are not matching the bank transfers. So she's having issues figuring out what months they actually belong in and matching up the bank transfers to the collector packs. 
Um, I was able to figure out most of them. The problem I was having when I did them in the receivables is that some of the packs were grouped together by either the treasurer or the accountant at the time, when okay. they so essentially th actually belonged to three banks. Oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, so they all belong to different banks and yeah. they were put into one batch? Yes. Oh, okay. So we have, okay. Brenda runs multiple yeah. banks depending okay. on whether the payments mm -hmm. are from Jeffrey and Jeffrey yeah. or their online collections mm -hmm. or they're just her standard yeah. payments. Okay. Right. But when they came through, Brenda does them all as separate batches, yeah. but either the treasurer or the accountant at the time. because Aggregated them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and okay. jammed them together. Okay. So these dollar amounts... Don't align don't. to anything that, that's showing. In the so bank. Okay. One, one big one. Yes. Okay. So. Um, so then the outstanding checklist is through October. Yes. Um, and it sounds like it's being reconstructed. From scratch because right. there wasn't one for 18. Okay. Do we know if we've, and, and I'm asking in part because in, in rereading through the the financial policy book it doesn't necessarily call out the outstanding checklist as a requirement so in, in outstanding the, checklist is the part of the cash book right it's a required part of the cash book in order to complete the bank reconciliation for the vendor or payroll account okay so there's no way to do a bank reconciliation on the vendor or payroll account without an outstanding checklist do we know if the way that we're currently tracking stuff in vadar today means that we have a current outstanding checklist for the fiscal we're in so we don't need to do it in VADAR, the bank that we're currently using. Okay. If we send them our file of checks after we do the warrant, they provide us with an outstanding checklist. Okay, and we're currently mm -hmm. providing that to our bank? I believe so. Okay. So every time we void a check, um, and I went over this again with Holly today, every time we void a check, even if we just misprint a check mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we need to notify the bank that we're voiding that check because if not that check will show up as an outstanding check great thank you you're welcome sorry that's okay just trying to get some clarity um so at the end of the day so long as uh, sarah is well enough that she wouldn't play typhoid mary then we may get started on the recon on Friday, this week yeah. on yes Friday. exactly Great. So that's all I have from the treasurer. Um, from the accountant side, um, I spent the last two weeks working on the annual report. Um, in doing the annual report, I was also working on the balance sheet and parts of the Schedule A. I have fully went through the general ledger multiple times already. I had not spent a lot of time working on any of the special revenue accounts, which is basically everything after 001. Um, in doing this annual report, once it is published, you'll see that I do separate sections for everything, and I break them out based on whether they're trust funds or special revenues, if they're grants, if they are capital projects and I pulled the balances at the end of each fiscal year. When I did that, I found a lot of issues in the special revenue accounts that has been, they've been affecting the town for at least two fiscal years. Um, one major one that I found that was deducted off of your free cash the last time you received free cash was you had a negative $177,000 in one of your grant accounts. Um, and in further looking into it with the help of Cindy at the highway department and Kathy, um, we realized that you had a positive balance of $195,000 in another account um, that was actually there to cover the $177,000 in addition to getting a storm reimbursement. So the $195,000 didn't actually belong where it was sitting. We found multiple of those. So I spent a week just moving money around that belonged to prior fiscal years. So these are all issues that won't affect the free cash again. Um, there are other issues that we found, um, I found over the last week 
I had to revisit the way I was going to do the annual report this year because um, there are a few issues with the way the water department is being run, um, which will have to be corrected. Um, the water department is currently being run as if it was an enterprise fund, however it's not. Um, we need to move the water department, at least their salary and expenses, out of 002 and move them back into 001 because they accept town funds um, for their salary and expenses. And it's creating, um, best term to use I guess is chaos in the general ledger. Um, so the ledger will not balance because they're redirecting behind the scenes money to go to what looks like water department cash when it really needs to go to general fund cash because it's accepting you know appropriation funds from the town budget and that's where mm -hmm. the cash needs to be going in and out of so in a sense my my accounts wouldn't balance because these links are all wrong because the water department was essentially set up wrong i was going to say so that's actually a structural issue in how the accounts were set up in beta yes so it's probably more than a two-year issue. It's definitely more than a two-year issue. The other issue we found, which I, Dennis just happened to walk in today and I was asking him some questions on how much he happened to know about the water department, just because I haven't had time to really research it, is they have the water surplus fund, which essentially funds the other two accounts that they have on the books. Um, which is the water main improvement, and I forget the other name of it, but they have two accounts that they fund, such as the ambulance does, they fund themselves. Um, the problem is that, the other issue we found, the town essentially on the tax rate recap, we are using the water fund as part of our local receipts because it's always been done that way. But because the water department is funding their own money and funding these two articles, basically, we can't call that out as local receipts local anymore. Receipts. If we continue to call it out as local receipts, we need to give the money to the general fund at the end of every year instead of circulating it back through the water department. So in terms of resolution on this, what's, what's the path forward that you're recommending? We're going to move the salary and expenses from the water department and rename them 001 and give them a number just as every other department does because they accept the town budget to fund them, mm -hmm. which is perfectly fine. We're going to leave the other two accounts that they are self-funding out of the surplus account and let them self-fund. They don't make a ton of money. They close each year with about 50 or so thousand dollars remaining, which they spend throughout the year on those two accounts, which is the way it's supposed to work and we're going to stop putting that water money on local receipts. Um, in a sense you would think that taking away the, we used about $120,000 as local receipts for water, you would think the tax rate would shoot straight up in hopes that taking away the $120,000 and disappearing the $95,000 worth of expenses, of it's expenses gonna wind up actually we should up. actually level ourselves yeah. off and the tax rate should stay exactly where it is. Yeah. So there should be no change to anything. Because it's an accounting issue, not a cash flow issue. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to look back um, and just make sure that at some point the water department's two accounts were made sort of to be a receipt reserved for appropriation. And for the accounts. most part, we've been several hundred thousand dollars under our local receipt estimates exactly. for years. So, so it's truly not going to run it afoul with the, with the tax rate because no. we had enough buffer there that even right. something like this is not going right. to be an issue. Okay. We just have to be more conscious of what is going where. Um, right. So that was another issue. So I've got to spend some time this week just fixing things and moving yep. things around, which um, on the outside, no one will really notice except for the water department when I give them their new account numbers. Um, that was it for cleanup. Other than that, like I said, so through the end of fiscal year 19, with the exception of a couple other little things, the ledger is basically done. Um, it was a mess. Um, the prior accountant was posting things the wrong way. Um, all the town meeting transfers that were voted at the beginning of fiscal year 19 were posted wrong. Um, they were affecting the ledger the wrong way. 
there's a certain way you have to do them in VADAR, because um, VADAR is a, it's an odd software, mm -hmm. but you have to do it a certain way in order to affect the GL the way you want it to. They weren't posted the right way, so it was throwing the books off of about $400,000. So as you're going through and doing current year transactions, mm -hmm. do we have any like visual standard work on the proper sequence to enter these type of transactions? Yes. Okay. So the way, because I work for a firm um, and we do what we call outsourced accounting for multiple communities. We do everything based on a set forms, set sequence of events. So that way, if I was ever sick or I ever left the firm and someone else took it over my spot, someone else from the firm could step right in and know exactly what I was doing, know exactly what forms I was doing. Um, we do it based on what software we're using. Um, which is typically either VADAR or SoftWrite for the smaller communities. So in VADAR, we have set forms we use for town meeting transfers. That way they post exactly the way they need to in VADAR. Um, they have to be posted twice, once by the accountant, once by the treasurer. Um, so everything is being done exactly the way it needs to be. Um, so if you were ever to hire another just town accountant, they could follow exactly the way that I have been doing things. Because everything I do, granted, I'm not saving it to your computer, I'm saving it to my cloud, mm -hmm. because it makes life easier for the auditor, because when we go to do the audit, we just essentially give him access to our cloud. Okay. But if we ever were to leave the town, we just dump, our, turn it over. We dump our cloud to you. Um, so everything is just very standard. So there will be, yeah, there's no chance of errors going forward. So that's it for cleanup. That's where we stand for the GL. Um, the other thing I've been working on, which I'm finally, I'm finished with, is the new policies and procedures. Um, I went through your current policies and procedures book, and I, I couldn't, I just couldn't work with it. Um, it was, it was old. The way that it was currently set up was outdated. Um, it didn't leave a lot of room to work with. So the way I set it up is a way a lot of towns have started to go towards is doing a small procedures manual and 18 standalone policies. The reason that this works better for towns is if you ever decided to change a policy at any time or amend a policy, you amend the standalone policy rather than the entire manual. The manual basically is a reference guide for every standalone policy. Um, I'm not going to go through every single one because they're currently would be considered draft form. Um, the biggest thing to note would be the adherence to financial policies sign-off sheet. So this would be the biggest change. It is makes everything that we do in the financial department incredibly transparent to everybody working in the town hall and to all of the residents of the town. So essentially what would happen is at the end of every month or the beginning week of the following month, the town accountant and the treasurer would sign off on where they stand on the cash book, what month they're balanced to, and if we want, we can add a dollar amount. That is completely up to you because mm -hmm. this is still in draft form. Um, most people just add what date it is balanced to. We can add a cash amount that it's balanced to, and that's perfectly acceptable. Then we would balance the payroll withholdings, which is something that has never been done here. Um, and then the collector and the accountant would balance the accounts receivable, which is your outstanding um, real estate and personal property motor vehicle levies and then the accountant would sign that the general ledger and the special revenue accounts are signed. Another thing that happens which I don't add to the sheet because it's difficult to get a signature is I do balance monthly as soon as all of this is done I balance monthly with the school department. I was about to ask that it didn't look like we had the school on here. So I don't like I don't add their signature so I make the school department email so I do everything with the school department via email so I balance that with them I have a spreadsheet that I keep it's all monthly it's tabbed out based on every account that they have 
whether it's their town budget or every special revenue. I send it to them with all of their information on it and I have them respond to me. I have my one contact at the school, which would be Sheila Noble for you guys, and then I use the cafeteria manager, who now is Karen Nick Nichols, I believe. She just was a transition about a month ago. And I make them respond to me via email that our accounts balance, and if they don't, they have to tell me where we're off, and we have to correct it that month. That will come the end of the year, we don't have any surprises in the school's accounts. Do, do we just want to? Uh, we can uh, just clip just, the email right to it. Yeah, either that or yeah, or just add an F and just say that you know confirmation mm -hmm. received from the school as of date. Sure. And if we want to attach the confirmation, that's fine. But we can absolutely do that. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Um, so basically, all the policies are meant just to give more overall compliance with regulations the every policy references what mass general law they come from um, they're very transparent I personally suggest once they're in final form and the selectmen have voted them into effect we add the effective date and they get posted on the town's website that way there is no chance for anyone to question what we're doing here. I seem to remember seeing uh, traffic from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee about them having at least seen these. So Did they have any I gave, edits? I gave Peter um, my original ones before I had edited them. Okay. And he had given me back some recommended edits. Some recommended edits. Traffic. So I left all of the edits that he suggested in the CIPC policy. He recommended some edits to the debt um, and the forecasting policy. Okay. I kept some of them, but not all. Okay. Um, the grant policy, I fully went back and forth with Kathy, and we kept all of her recommendations as well as mine. Okay, so great. that was uh, what she had agreed on. Um, the only one I think that still needs to be reviewed, there's a couple spots in the procedure manual where I need to go over with um, Brenda and just get some interest rates and fees. Um, but that was also something that I was gonna see where she stood on increases. Um, but other than that, that was it. So take your time and okay. read through and... Oh, okay. So before you're finished up tonight, too, mm -hmm. Laurie and I had a discussion about something today, and I know you don't want to change anything until we're done with the audit and the management letter, but Laurie does have a suggestion, and she can explain it to you. Okay. So um, as far as the fiscal year 21 budget goes, there's not going to be a lot of room for large scale changes to the actual expenditure budget um, and then I know the town administrator has been brought up multiple times um, I've gone through and changed around a uh, job description which is perfectly fine however funding a position into our current budget is just not possible and I don't think makes sense at our current time at all um, there is an opportunity to add a position of maybe a finance director instead, which would make more sense to the town, given your current finance situation. It is more of a role that you would find with someone with a heavy financial background rather than a town administrator who is going to have more of a public sector background rather than financial. And that would be my suggestion. It's also a lot more cost effective to the town. Well, <clears throat> there are two holes. There's a financial hole that we've talked now months now. Exactly. And so there is no, absolutely no question that there needs to be better oversight mm -hmm. and a person sitting between the two offices, or several offices, mm -hmm. but essentially the two offices, mm -hmm. so that it's clear month over month that everything's there to 
back to your recommendation as far as policy as far as that goes. So absolutely there has to be that. And, okay. and I, I would go recommend to move forward faster than yeah. than the, we, just, we have discussed this today. It, it really is something that we really do need to do. Yes. And, and unfortunately, the audit is now it continues to be a couple of months away. So to have that person here and available during that time would be a, a learning experience that would be valuable. Mm -hmm. Flip it around. Later in the agenda tonight, we're going to talk about Collins. When I look at the Collins report, mm -hmm. I see procedure after procedure yeah. that needs to be done. And so there are really two, back to the job description that, that, you, that you're talking about, there are two valuable jobs, financial oversight and HR oversight, Stra uh, more of the strategic of HR. Those, if we could have someone doing that and getting paid to do that, that would be a benefit to the town. So again, should we wait? Probably with what we know, no, we should, we should move forward. So, in looking at the financial aspect of it, are, if the town decides to renew our contract for next year, which is not up until June 30th, we will be including some aspects of doing the financial director position, not called out as being a financial director. That is our normal job description. However, when we put together our proposal for Pioneer Valley, because it was done so quickly last year, our attachment was not included. So you'll see what some of the aspects of a financial director are when we send you our proposal for this coming year, if that's something the town decides to go ahead with. So we should dig into that. As, as that we should do that sooner than later. And then, and then what then is then open to, to next year and what we have to do for next year is we have to begin to address the call and stuff. And it can't be volunteer. Yes. It, no, it, it must be a paid position that they, they're tagged with that work and it must be done. Yeah. And, and again, it, it, it's the personnel board can be an oversight, but they, they just don't have the wherewithal to do the amount of work that needs to be done. Now, is there any way that we could get you to come on board now, like as a financial director, on, under the contract? Could we do an addendum to it before the end of this year? So basically, most of the tasks that I'm doing now are outside of the contract and would be considered more of a financial director okay. role. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're just doing them just to get you guys more in compliance. So we don't need to do an addendum to the contract. I've spoken to Eric about it, and okay. he was completely fine with me doing the policies and procedures, which is not something that- Normally the accountant would yeah. do. Not just as the accountant. Um, attending monthly selectmen's meetings. Um, so th these are all things that are outside of our current contract now. We're doing them just to get you more caught up. Our contract included six meetings a year. Um, so this is something that we could look more into if you wanted next year to, like I said, you could add another day. Our contract for next year would include standard to what we have now, plus the additional activities for the cost that we're all gonna, you know, we would all agree on, which is just a standard monthly rate, less, substantially less than what you're paying right now because this was considered a cleanup year. Next year we're going into an outsourced year. Um, so we've already got our price settled that we know of so I could do the budget, um, but the contract will be provided to you and at that time you could look at it and say, well, I want more than six meetings a year. I want if you wanted more than one day a week on site. And that's stuff that could be renegotiated. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as changing and amending the contract right now, I, I don't see the need for it. So we just the, continue doing what we're doing now. So the advisory board has your recommendation for the next fiscal year? They do not have it yet because okay. I'm still doing the budget myself. Okay. <laughs> I have it <laughs> okay. if you want it. But they need it at some point. There, um, so I think the way we agreed to do the budget this year, since this is kind of doing it a little different, um, I collected everybody's requests. Yep. I'm doing the spreadsheet. Um, 
with all of fiscal year 21 budget requests and recommendations, well not recommendations, all the requests, I'm plugging in um, just the standard COLA percentage for the labor and then I'm going to add in what we are expecting for revenues and then I'm passing the whole thing off to them. Um, and then they can change it, adjust it, adjust well. it yeah. put in their recommended column, um, which I'm leaving blank. Um, but I'm collecting everything and doing all the data entry for them. Excellent. So I'm expecting it about a week. As it was originally set up, the, the, this procedure was supposed to go until the end of the month. And then it turned over to the uh, advisory. Yes. So I'm. I was telling Lee before the meeting, I have, um, I think, three missing requests, which I'm going to give them um, to the end of the week, and then they become level funded. Yep. Okay. So, and at that we point... Do we have any communication from the folks that are missing? Um, it's all the people I don't think actually use email. It's our inspectors that don't generally hop on the email. So... No. Yeah. So, no. And I should have grabbed Mr. Wall today when I passed him in the hall, and I didn't. So, okay. Leave him the big posted note. Yeah. 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 That'll work. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I had great feedback. I've gotten everybody else's. Um, there were not a lot of increases, which I was surprised. Everyone went ahead with the level funding for the payrolls and followed the directions and got them back on time. So I was pleasantly surprised. Well, they were all really, I got really positive feedback yeah. about yeah. the kickoff meeting. You guys, good you guys did a fabulous yeah, job with the communication. Everybody was very happy with that kickoff yeah. meeting. Yeah, so I think I think the, the in return for proactive communication, we got compliance, yay. That's great. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, that is great. So, big question so it's all clear with everyone. We have a magic date of May 1st. May 1st. How do you feel about May 1st? I should be done before May 1st. Okay, now you have a partner in crime in the treasurer's office. Exactly. How does the treasurer and treasurer's office feel about May 1st? I, I'm hoping really good. Okay. So, I guess we'll see on Friday. How yeah, far sure. y'all get. Give yep. or take the plague. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's not play. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I can't I can't afford to be out for a week. As I, I, yeah. you know, None it's of us. Um, as long as everything goes well on Friday, I'll have a better feeling on where we are. Because, like I said, my numbers are good through the end of the year. It's just a matter of do her numbers jive with mine. Yep, and what it's going to take to make yeah. them jive. Exactly, um, and then. My concern then will be how quickly can we catch up in fiscal year 20. So at, at some point there was some con, uh, concern that re necessary resources weren't possibly available over on the other side of the fence as far as the treasurer's office. Do we need to do something or can we do something to make sure that we have adequate resources on the treasurer's side? Yeah. Well, uh, um I've already solved one problem to get okay. something for the treasurer okay. to lessen hers with some work. Okay. So that's one problem. And then we also I had talked to Laurie about that too, because you had suggested maybe somebody from Sarah's office or Yeah. But but they're very expensive and I don't think we could afford them well, right uh, now. Well and again it's you're gonna have a meeting on Friday, but the one thing that I don't wanna do is wait two weeks. Mm -hmm and find that we need to rush for the remaining six weeks or less mm -hmm. that we have available. So if, if the patch that you come up with mm -hmm. works, fine. But I think on the flip side, if Friday you see that you're, you're in jeopardy, mm -hmm. we, we need to circle away and find some cash to pay whatever bill we have mm -hmm. to make sure we're on the May 1st schedule. I'm not concerned about the May 1st schedule. What my I Sarah, I, I have faith that she'll catch up. Yeah. Okay. And she, she's got two employees that have been working on the recons while she was out sick. Okay. So my concern isn't that. My concern is how quickly, when Sarah leaves, how quickly can it's good, essentially will be Holly and I. How quickly can Holly and I get fiscal year twenty and done? Yeah. Because that, we essentially cannot start even attempting to reconcile cash 
until Sarah gives us her ending number for fiscal right. year 19. Right, that was yeah. that's yeah. that's yeah. the that's yeah. the big challenge because yeah. she had to reconstruct. And she has, the and I'm also I'm working with Holly, who I have sat with once now to work on the cash book, who has no cash book experience whatsoever. Right. Where sure. Sarah is able to whip through this because she works as a treasurer in multiple towns. She's done this a hundred times. Um, I am most likely going to change my schedule. So on weeks that we cut checks, I will be here on Tuesday. On the opposite week, I'm gonna come on Wednesday because Holly is not able to leave the police station on Tuesdays, but she can have a little leeway on Wednesdays to sit in the treasurer's office all day and I can sit there and work with her. So have we talked to Holly about whether she'd be willing to come in for one of the Fridays to be part of the reconciliation. Oh, she does that come Sarah, in. She, she's in every Friday. She is, she's just not she's doing the reconciliations with no, them. No, I understand that. But but I'm, what I'm thinking is that it may be good for her to sit through at least at least a, a port. Maybe it's not this Friday. Maybe it's like once you guys really get our hammering mm -hmm. with it. Maybe it is starting from scratch. And, and seeing, I know she's got other things that she needs to do on Friday in the treasurer's <coughs> office, but I think sometimes going through, a, there's nothing quite like actually physically going through a process to, to get really grounded in it. And I'm just wondering if, I know you guys are gonna wanna f kind of fly through it, but mm -hmm. I think it might be good to involve her up front in, in some of this. To some degree. I, had, I know I had talked to Sarah when she first started, and she said after we probably get into FY20, she said probably she can train uh, Holly. So Holly has started the cash book. She we've has done, started it. We've done training on how mm -hmm. to do. So the cash book essentially is two parts. One part is you enter everything for each bank. You enter the warrants, you enter the transfers, mm -hmm. you enter the receipts yeah. for each and bank. And all that's pure in Vader. Yeah. It's Excel, actually. Oh, so Excel. you take everything from Vader and you're entering it into an Excel. Which So I gave her the, the cash book that our firm uses, which is also the one that Sarah uses. So I gave that to Holly. So she has we set up the cash book. I got her set up all the way through the end of fiscal year 20, blank cash books. I sat with her and worked on July, entering everything. Then there's a separate tab for each bank, which is where you reconcile your cover sheet to your bank statement. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that yet because she doesn't have a beginning balance to right. start with for her she cash book. Because she doesn't have one from... Right. So I told her to take basically everything that's been done so far to date for fiscal year 20 and just start entering it into the right month, into the right bank cover and sheet. When, and then once you have a starting balance... We can go back mm -hmm. and I told her I can either sit with her and show her how to do it, um, which I don't mind doing it. Um, and I can actually bring her in one that is completed because I'm working for another town right now as the treasurer, so I can show her because I use the, we use the same cash book in every town, so I'm working with another treasurer right now doing her cash book, so I can show her exactly how it should line mm -hmm. up. We can also work right off of the one that Sarah's doing. Every treasurer does their stuff a little bit differently, um, so Sarah may not do hers exactly the way that I would do mine. Um, okay, so. I'm showing her the way that I do mm -hmm. mine. But it's transparent. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Yep. So you end up with the same number. It's just a matter of how, how you get there. Exactly. So I've been working with her on that. Um, I guess she told Linda I started giving her lists yeah. every week of stuff that she's a little behind on that needs to be done because we are behind on a lot of stuff. Um, and I guess she really enjoyed yes. getting a list of she items yeah, that needs that, to be done. Yeah, I mean, um, being able to burn it down. Yeah, she so did, that, she appreciated it because we had talked yesterday and she was pleased that uh, Laurie had left that for her and she said if she wanted to do that every week, yeah. then she knows the starting point, what she has to do. Yeah, so that worked out well. So I'm hopeful that we'll be able to catch up fairly quickly. My goal for closing fiscal year 20 would be October 15th. Um, and that, right. is, that would be balance she submitted um, and then schedule A to follow mm -hmm. sometime in November. Yeah, but we're not going to be as bad as we are. That's the key. Well, and that's, well, that's, that's still sooner I'm working than we've off ever. my own so, data entry. Yeah, yeah, so. So, so that's one of those things where exactly. it's, it's better than we've ever done, though it's maybe not quite to optimum. Like optimum would be we'd be getting it done like in September. But if we got it no. done by... Never. Never. No. Really? So the... Proper way to do a balance sheet, um, and especially because you guys do a lot of grants, um, you 
the DOR allows you until September 30th to collect any outstanding grant money right. and apply it to your balance sheet. Um, okay, so if you have through September to collect, September 30th. Then you, so then you've got. So the way I normally do it is I will do my entire balance sheet and I will flag any grant that is sitting wide open, mm -hmm. hoping for money, and I will wait until September 30th. I'll check with the treasurer, I check on vendor web to see if the money came in, and I give myself till October 15th normally because I'm doing multiple balance sheets, but. I have it done by September 30th. I wait for the money to come in because it's less free cash that you get deducted. And that also includes like chapter 90, um, anything. And then I submit it right after that. Um, typically while I'm working on the balance sheet, I start the schedule A. You have till November 30th to get your um, schedule A done. Normally November, I'm working on recaps and the schedule A's. I typically don't submit anything late. Um, throughout September, I'm also submitting all of the gateway forms. Um, you have September 15th, you have to do snow and ice. Um, then you start doing your receivables and balancing mm -hmm. those and getting those submitted. Everything on Gateway is submitted and done. So as soon as September 30th comes around, you wait, you check for any money that's come in, and then you submit and you're done. So my only concern is you've chatted with Holly mm -hmm. and she's comfortable, especially with now the, oh, the yes, list. She is, yeah. But that she knows that if we or she needs assistance that we're sitting here and if we have to meet especially okay. to provide that oh, assistance yes. yes i've told her like I, I told you one of the things so one of the things i can tell you when she does her checks you know she prints out all the vendor checks um we're going to have um lois who is one of the municipal clerks yeah. lois is going to stop doing that okay for her so that's going to relieve her of one thing right there excellent yeah and then uh Another thing, now you were talking about HR write-off. Well, that's a different topic. A different topic, no. But, 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 but if, that still, it has a lot to do with her also. I know. And again, it's something that we have it was do. joint yep. before. Knowing what we now know, mm -hmm. it needs to be yeah. separated. Well, I have a, an idea. Mike just had a new um, assistant town clerk come in and work for him, for her. And uh, she, she has HR experience because she's ran HR uh, departments. Okay. And so her only problem is like babysitting problems. So I, was, I think I might talk to her and see if she could try to maybe arrange something. Well, you, met, you, met, you met her this morning, mm -hmm. didn't you? Yep. She's very nice. Yeah. 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 And so um, maybe if she could do something with some babysitting hours, maybe she could come to in and help us out for a while. Okay. With the HR. Um, well, I think, I think that we'll it tomorrow. needs to be in concert with the personnel board because mm -hmm. knowing what we now know, yeah. we whether we start now or July 1st, we have to be, be yeah. proactive. I know we couldn't, that's the trouble now. We can't start right now with an HR, but maybe she could come in as some kind of a financial clerk and help her out. Mm -hmm. use, use it like that. Well, yeah. and, and I'm wondering, I know that hate to outsource everything in the town, but I believe that there are a couple of entities that do municipal HR as well. Yeah. I don't know how There's good. a few big companies yeah, that just do it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't ever really come in to the building. They just do everything. Yeah. Well, it's as simple as Corey checks. Yep. It's they do everything online for you, basically. They yeah. do your Corey checks. They'll do um, monthly or quarterly reports, mm -hmm. unemployment, that kind of so, stuff. They'll take care so of your filing. Maybe what we just need to do is get some RFPs out. And I know we submitted our budget already for um, f for the year, but- You can take we, it back if you want to have an entry yet. <laughs> so RFPs, we need, need to do the HR work, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, I, I, like I think, no, let's no, go down no. several branches. Let me see. If we, if we have someone that's in-house that we can give some hours, then it's in house, and we can give them some hours, and, and right. at least get started. We, we, flip, yeah. flip it around because we, to, we can't get HR itself because we have to go. The personnel board has to come up with uh, the job description, exactly. and then we have to get the classification. We have to have all of that um, done at town meetings. Well, well that's Extens extensive experience. I want to say she worked at Fallon. Yeah. Uh, Fallon Healthcare, and she was the head of the HR department. I think. I mean, yeah. it was amazing when we saw her resume. It was 
And she's a former resident. She, she was another community. She, she yeah, I had a nice conversation with her this morning. Yeah. She worked for me years ago when she was going to college. Oh, wow. It's Catherine's sister. Catherine, Catherine Rundell, Latour's Catherine sister. Latour's okay. sister. I mean, realistically, if we could get anyone with some hours and yeah. some experience now that could on, that could yeah. assist Holly oh, yeah. with anything Absolutely. would be... I'll give That'd her a call. I'll give her a call. I mean, we're behind yeah. on we'll talk to her. Yeah, if she has so coverage lot. issues, that's one thing. But we're behind on reports to yeah. like the retirement board. Yeah. Um, it's stuff yeah. that needs to be done and caught up, but it also needs to be figured out how to be done. And unfortunately, we are like a weird school district here where we enter our own people <laughs> yeah she talked to me about the fact that they, they're not even quite sure where it, where it broke right so, so and um i haven't asked sarah for her help yet because i don't know that she would even know how to do that we're a very odd school district here so i ended up reaching out to my treasurer in holland today for help um and asking her if she'll explain to us how to do the report because Frankly, it's it's very late. It needs to get done, right. um, and we need someone who knows how to do it. The exact report that math teachers needs. Well, did um, she tell you that the girl that she was supposed to work with and explain it? She's new also, and she really doesn't know how to do right. it herself. Have we reached out to Deb Boyd and found out whether there's somebody else that can support from the school districts? If yeah, they, they said unfortunately, no. Uh, no. no. It's it's over here. It's, it's here, all the information. Yeah, it has to be done here. Oh, the information's here. It's all we're, here, and but we have to do it here. It has to come okay. from the treasurer. I'm sure. Yeah. And it's with, okay. the, and it's with the uh, Mass Teachers Association for the dues and things. This is what it is. Yeah. And there was a new girl, Holly, like I said, uh, she was supposed to help Holly over the phone, but she's not quite sure either because she just got hired. This is the gal in Holland? No, no, no. no, no. no. Well, that's that's the mass teachers. person at Mass Teachers. Mass Teachers. Okay, so... We have someone I'm in Holland. Yes, I'm that hoping that my something. treasurer in Holland will help her. Right, and so that we could actually actually educate yeah. somebody else yes. once we get our act together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I emailed right. her at like five o'clock tonight. I know she had already left for the day, but right. she had offered her assistance to Holly before and said if she needed anything to let her know, mm -hmm. she'd gladly help. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so the the plan plan A is yeah. get some hours from another resource yeah, and see, yeah. If, yeah. see if that works we'll see if we can I'll and, talk to you. and if that works at least in the near term then we can wait till another fiscal year or another town meeting to decide what more we wanted to do mm -hmm. because again the audit now our timing would be um, we're looking somewhere Tom said in the middle of June he said he'll know more probably in the middle of March his exact schedule for yeah. but we're still kind of on that yes yeah on, on that target mm -hmm. so having kind of limping along until that audit's done is probably yeah. the right thing to do mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. And then we talked today too, the management letter probably wouldn't be here probably until fall. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm thinking probably October. No, and yeah. we want to go yeah. through that with every, every department Big also time. before we do anything. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Right. We're all trying to do our part. Yeah. Yes, Don. As the chairman of the water commission, I'm very first at hearing about this issue with the department or the structure or the, or the issues. Kind of surprised to hear it, uh, but I would like, I would request uh, a meeting with the water commissioners to present this so we know exactly what the issues are and what the proposed recommendations will be and the changes. So I met with Dennis just by chance today. He was going to prepare something to give to all of you. So I figured I would give him a chance to present it to all of you, but I would gladly meet with all of you. I mean, we can call an emergency water commissioner meeting at your, at your schedule. I don't know what your schedule is. I'm here every Tuesday, but I can, if it's easier, I can meet with you guys another day, any day but Monday, realistically. You can talk sure. Okay. So, Excellent. And we all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, you Laurie. You're doing an excellent job. Thank Laura. you. We're very happy. Okay. Next thing on our agenda is appointments. Okay. Uh, this came from uh, the CBA. Danielle Forsier White, who is on the board of ZBA, she has left. 
And so they would like to request that Roger Mandel Jr. be appointed to a full member and that Patrick Mulhern as an alternate member. Motion to appoint. I'll second it for a discussion. Roger's now an alternate member. Yeah, they he's an alternate. That's what I just said. Full member full, yeah. and then add Patrick Mulhern. Okay. And um, Ken Cleveland, that's from Steve. But that's Ken from Cleveland Steve. Ken Cleveland came in today and, and thought that was a good move, yeah. too. So I assume. And for <gasps> discussion on it? Okay. I think the, and I know we don't, we haven't previously had any requirements to this effect, but one of the challenges that we seem to be having with the DBA is just kind of like procedural. We've had a number of procedural issues along the way this last year. Mm -hmm. So I, I would, I know that we've got like a planning board guide that was developed years ago to help the the planning board ensure that they're kind of following the mass general law and rules of the mm -hmm. road and a lot of the content of that um, I think is important to proper zoning board execution I'd really like to see from the chair um, what his plan is in terms of ensuring that we we know what the uh, proper uh, procedures are mm -hmm. in terms of zoning board and that we have a way to at least a sign off that the new people that get appointed have some form of training they at least that they certify that they've read our zoning mm -hmm. bylaws because uh, it's amazing to see sometimes when people haven't even opened yeah. the book that they're responsible yeah. for okay um, I'd like to see something like that. Um, we're, we're meeting, we have an e-board meeting, not okay. second board, um, next Monday at 10. Right. So after we could probably adjourn that, and then these are some things that we could talk we could about. talk with, about after that. With the zoning board of appeal. Yeah, I think that would be good. That's what we can do. Yeah. So if you want to add that onto the uh -huh. agenda. Onto the agenda, that would be great. Yeah, that's what we can do. Okay, so do we want to appoint um, Roger Mandel Jr. as a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals and term to expire June 30th, 2020? Sure. All right. And then we also, aye. aye. And then we also want to appoint um, Patrick Mulhern as the alternate, and his term will expire June 30th, 2020. Sure. A motion for those two? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. aye. So even if they do it online, if they I need to sign those. Mass General Laws online, whatever. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I need to sign those. Oh yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Mm. And then the fisherman. And that's something I was going to ask. Um, last week, last week, this past weekend, they had all those, um, you know how they do with the sales? They yes. Had, they had, it was in the paper that they, this club had the racing up there. Now, isn't that something they should come to us for permission? Because, I mean, they asked, you know, they, they asked here for a permit to use the pond. Hmm. Shouldn't they? Boy. That's a good question. Because, yeah, that's what I wondered after I had read, I saw it in the paper. I can't yeah, think. Yeah, I just know that they're out there year over year. Yeah. Is that something we could find out from the um, okay. fishery and wildlife? Yeah, call, <laughs> you want to yeah. call Todd? Yeah. Yeah, call Todd. Because it said it was, a, it was some club, and that's what they were holding with their, their races out there. And I said, oh, they haven't asked for permission to do that. Hmm. Yeah, Todd will okay. know. All right. Okay, now we're on to uh, some special use permits. Um, the event will be 6 7 2020 on Quaybog Pond. It's the Friday Night Bass Trail. Oh, that's the only that's one. It. I like the motion. So motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With a retroactive second. 
with a rotor <laughs> Now we have some wage authorizations. And uh, what this is doing is basically bringing a lot of them up to minimum wage. And one of them is for Paul Mikowski. Paul is our um, custodian. His present salary is 1125 and we're going, going to be going up to 1275 and we probably he's on salary. He's salary on salary. Reflected in that right. Figure, mm -hmm. that and then, reflected of the twelve. Okay. You're going to reflect the hours, yeah. the different yes. hours yeah. to make the math. That's make right. it. And exactly. then um, a suggestion Laurie had today. She says before we start approving these, she says we should probably check to see if we have enough money in the budget before we give these different raises. Yep. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. Yeah. It's essentially, can only take the. So that's right. something. I think my concern would be is is well, ones that are bringing up to minimum wage. Minimum wage you have to right. I mean that's to, just that's something any, we just. But any to other do. ones, if it, there's a substantial increase in pay, mm -hmm. I think we should check to see if the money is in the budget. We're gonna have that conversation before the evening's out as okay. well. All right. <laughs> All right. Then we have um, okay registrar for elections. Uh, employee uh, Lois O'Leary, he is bringing her from 1217 up to 1275. And then uh, the fire chief, Alexis Waterbeck, she's new, and her rate will be 1275. And this one is for uh, department, this is from uh, for Bruce Clark, who was hired as an emergency operator uh, for a salary of 1986. And this comes from the highway. These have all been signed by the personnel board. And then we have uh, Marianne Morano, uh, who is being brought up to 1275 also. And Board of Health, um, Christina L. Florence. Uh, she's going, she started um, December 18th, 2019. And her proposed salary is eighteen dollars an hour. And then for the town clerk, it's uh, Heidi Heidi Poo, and uh, she will be also being paid eighteen dollars an hour. So if we want to approve all of them at one time, say it. Any discussion on any of these? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, are you still pushing out, um, in essence, the monthly expenditure report? I do one every other week. Do one every other week? Okay. Do you include our office in that? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, all the different uh, accounts, yes. Yeah, can you start forwarding that? Sure. Or else just include me direct, because I haven't seen it in a bit. I don't know if I got left off the list again. Great, thank you. Yeah. Oh. Okay. This one was already signed by us. Okay. Actually, that may be one thing that really just ought to go on the wage authorization form is that there should be a certification from the department head that they have consulted and that they have enough budget. Yeah. Right. I, I mean, because that, honestly, it's one thing for idea. us to check, but I think it's another thing they should have their own. I mean, they should be responsible for their own budget and they should be aware of where they stand. Right. So, I, I mean, it's that. entirely possible if you went without for somebody for a while then you might have the budget with the understanding you might not get it the next year and you're going to have to figure out what to do about ours. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. 
Next one is the awards for the town report, printing the town report. Okay. Um, this year, Karen went out to uh, bid with three different ones. Well, actually, I, I sent what? it out to six, I think. Six. Oh, in there, okay. We did receive three back. Okay, we received three back. And... Um, the one that came in the uh, cheapest was Country Press at uh, $1,271.29. And they're the ones who have been doing our town report every year, and they, they've well, been doing a nice they're job. They're always the lowest, and I did find out yeah. actually from someone else that I sent an RFQ to that they are wholesaling, that they're giving us the wholesale price yeah. that they would give another vendor. Yeah. So I thought they were saving money. I don't even think it went up since last year. So motion to award. Mo motion to award it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Our next one here is to accept the Collins report. Does everybody yeah. have a copy? I didn't get a hard copy. I have yeah. a soft copy. I have a copy for you there. I wonder if you can give it to you. Oh, she's good. Okay. okay. And Clarence, did you do it? Yes. Yeah. Electronically as well. Yeah. There's two of each. There's two. There's the HR and the classification right. report. So. Oh, okay. Wait a minute, Beth. You'll have to give me back the one. That says yeah, you gave me your copy. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't going to say anything. There you go. All right. Perfect. But tonight, though, we're just going to. Um, we're going to accept the report. We're so. going to accept the report tonight. Yeah, from the, mo um, the motion is to accept the report. Okay. Or reports. Reports. Do we Second. Have any any um, discussion? Do we want to discuss anything about this? Yes. Well, first of all, I mean, if anybody um, wants to know, we so we started this um, to have these done. We got a a grant from the community compact, which was through the governor's office, and we were uh, giving um, fifteen thousand dollars to do each one of the reports. And so we had a, a woman from the Collins. We hired the Collins Center, which is a part of UMass. Yep. And she had come up, and I remember that she had gone, uh, she interviewed like all the employees and found out their positions and everything. And she did her report up like on the wage, wage one. And then she also did and told us different human resource things that we should be doing that we're not. Right. And so we want to accept yes. these reports yeah, we, because yeah. they're good good information and yes. advice and counsel to mm -hmm. us. However, we actually have to do something about it this time. Yes, we have to. And, and I, I, I've got the human resource document in front of me, mm -hmm. and that would suggest that there is page after page of policies and procedures yeah. that need to be done. Yep. The personnel committee has been working on those policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. we have Finally, got a complete uh, draft of all of the policies to put into the employee handbook. The other piece that the personnel uh, board needs is approval of the grade and wage scales. Are we going with our own rules or are we adopting the Collins Center? I'd, I'd be looking for a recommendation from the personnel board. We would recommend adopting the Collins Center. Uh, which which is the second yeah. part of this is that we need to do something because we're two and three dollars short mm -hmm. and again what what's fair and reasonable yeah. where we are is not fair and reasonable yeah. and, and doing a two and a half percent across the board increase will never make it very no. reasonable no. Yeah. I think the, and I know we had proposed a couple of different modes to go after that previously, um, and this is maybe a more of a conversation for with the advisory committee as to whether 
what we want to do is have um, like two recommended columns columns on the Still on the water. Yeah. Would yeah, be Steve, Steve had um, called me on that. Right. And that's this is what he wanted to do. And then and then to to, to try to vote it as a yeah. package to mm -hmm. get you know. Yeah, some not to exceed. Yeah. yeah. And then start working away at it. As far as by position. Yeah. Right, but I think what I'm, my thought is is that it be presented, in essence, as a package. If we were going to try to at least get to like the minimum bar yeah. On, yeah. on some of the mm -hmm. the Collins recommendations, yeah. um, and to provide some sort of synopsis for the townspeople, maybe in advance when we were talking about potentially doing a public hearing yeah. on the budget and say, look. You're going to see two columns. One is a flat two and a half percent. One of them is adjusted to reflect the market based on what Collins came back with. Minimum but those were, but right. those Collins ones that are here now, that they were 2019. Understood. Oh yeah. 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 Right. And then then we discussed today, Laurie La, Larry and I discussed, and Karen, we were looking, you know, at a lot of the grade and scale, and Laurie saw a lot of differences in some of them. Steps. So I, I've done this with another town already. We've adopted the Colin Center and I went through the whole process with that. And the way it seemed to be set up is the grades were all seemed to be you know, set across the board. Mm -hmm. The assistants were all grouped together and operators and whatnot. But it didn't seem to take into account the steps mm -hmm. for people who had been there quite some time. 30 years, yeah. 10 years. Everyone appeared to be set at a one. Um, which that's not right either. No, I mean, Can't a 30 year employee or a 15 year employee should not be starting at a, a grade four, step one, it should be a grade four, step whatever the book yeah. recommends, mm -hmm. right? Um, because their pay shouldn't be the same as the person next to them that yeah. started two weeks ago. Um, you know, so I think there's some there's some discrepancies yeah. in there. And so it, didn't, it may just be because they use boilerplate for some of the reports, even though that the, the comps in a table. What I'm wondering is, I yeah. mean, there's names next to them, and there's you know years of employment, so yeah. it was easy to call out that okay, this one's wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, you no know way this person's a one with 30 years. Now, Laurie said that she, if she's still willing, she said that we're having personnel board meeting next Wednesday. She said she'd be willing to come in and go over that with us. That's a start. So, are you still willing to come in? Oh, sure. sure. She'll come in and she'll attend yeah, and she'll. I mean, right now, we're hiring people and paying them more than comparable positions yeah. who've been here 10, 20 years. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's it. That's, yeah. A problem. So, if we can have her come in, I think that would be a big help to us next week. So, if you're going to have that meeting, should we get it to an off? Uh, cycle thing where we're doing the financial things like March 4th or March something is our next meeting March 10th when's the next I'll have to look on the calendar, the look on the calendar. The because the 11th I don't know because on the 3rd is the election usually yeah. when yeah it's, no it's meetings not, when the election no I'm just going to look in February it's 10th it's, it's March 10th March, so, March 10th. so we would be talking a financial report March 10th okay. which would then in turn talk about March 24th meeting with the personnel board and advisory to, to chat about what a recommendation might be. And I mean, the common sense recommendation is not to start everybody at step one. It is to start everybody at a point that the appropriate be okay. But we got to talk about it. Yeah. One, you should have the time with Lori to, to figure out what makes sense. Because again, some of the stuff doesn't make sense to go all the way, but it does make sense to go some part part way. Right, you want to at least go so they get an increase, but still have room to keep stepping up. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Right. Not that they're maxed out now, especially if they're going to stay for more years. Right. I mean, we've got the a good. The spreadsheet, Lori, that I gave you showed people getting a, an increase. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some people got good increases. And some, some people, people got minimum right. yeah. that, that's, that's okay. Right. Solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So.
So again, yeah. you'll have a chance between now and March mm -hmm. 24th to have a conversation between advisory and personnel and, the, and to come with a recommendation of sorts on March 24th because then that would give us six, well, more than six weeks mm -hmm. to talk, talk about a public hearing and talk about getting ready for the annual town meeting. Good? Good. Have we had any articles come in at all? I have a few, yes. They because have like we, the end of March. March, March. Yeah, because yeah, like we said, we don't, this year we're gonna try not to reopen it. We just. I have like three of them too, so. Okay. I committed to writing like three, so okay. I have to do this stuff. So a motion to, you have a motion to approve these reports. Acceptance. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now we have to approve payment of uh, CDBG program invoice for number 13. Motion to approve. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, and the amount on that is $14,564.56. Because sometimes they send them back and say they have to be signed on the spot. We don't have anything on the others, right? No, nothing on the no, other. I have another. Oh, you have another. Okay. Yes. See, so Mr. Tapp is in the audience and was not able to make it to Boston yesterday. I had the opportunity to be uh, a writer with Bill Simpson to meet with the Access Board in Boston. And so I can report, and again, Bill will provide more detail, mm -hmm. but the Access Board did in fact approve the use of the, the idea of the lift. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, well done. Well done. Oh, that's good to hear. So, Good. so that's so that was really the last hurdle. We've got the funding. Yeah. We've now got approval of the board. Yeah. So now quite quite interesting. There was one lady there to say, that said, "Is this here's this the formal access board, right?" Mm -hmm. And this one lady said, "I'd keep the sixty thousand and go ahead and just just go ahead and, and use the building discreetly. And it was like, <laughs> no, 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 we're not, no, we're not doing that. No, we're not no. Doing that. No. Besides, in this town, we like to tattle on each other. Exactly. So that, yeah. that, that, that wouldn't last very long, so. so. But anyway, so good news. That is good news. And, and that's again, good news Don, to hear. Bill, thank you. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to keep asking until yeah. they, they'll say yes. Well, the, the, Mary Lou sent the application in and lo and behold, waited about a month and they had moved their office and they never pulled in the mail. Uh, and then it came back with a check and then it went back again. And then they came the, back the hearing was scheduled and then it was canceled and then it was scheduled again and canceled. So this has been a long drawn out process to be honest yeah. with you. And uh, was, I talked with Bill last night, really glad to hear that uh, All worked out. it was favorable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I pleaded our poor, poor town and <laughs> how the, the expansion was an eighth of our budget and they bought into it, so that was good. That's good. Very well, that's good. real math, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's legit. Yeah. So, great. Yeah. Madam Chairman, right. may I approach to discuss cable access? Um, well, we haven't even looked at we it. We haven't even looked at it yet. Because, because that's it. I mean, we just got it tonight. That's in correspondence. Okay. So you told me two weeks ago that we have an answer at this meeting, and I asked to be on the agenda. So, so you got to report, <coughs> review it, and put it on the agenda yeah. for next time. Well, we haven't even reviewed it. Well, we, when did you receive the documents? We just received it tonight. Okay. 
So we want to well, review I mean, it. The, 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 the station's been off for over a year and a half. I mean, how much time are we going to take before it gets back on? I don't. This I mean, is seriously. this is well, Dave. No. We have to read it ourselves, and this is questions that you have to ask the chairman of the board. He was the one that did this out. I understand. I read it. And myself. I we haven't had a chance because we just received it tonight. So we'll go over it. Put it on the agenda we'll for next time. Put it on the agenda for next time. Okay. We've been out a year, so so be it. Yeah. I mean, it, we should have been discussing this long before now. You know, we're taking money from charter, and the people aren't getting us what we're giving the money for. Should be on, should be up and running on, on the TV. Okay. We'll look at it and we'll decide and see okay. what questions that we have to ask for Mr. Erlka. Okay. All right. Okay. Under correspondence, we have here from the highway superintendent, and the subject is the highway old generator. Uh, they want to take, and they've removed it from service. It's been disconnected, and they no longer need it. And they want to know if the selectmen will vote to auction it off or either have municipal bid or auctions international. And they can be used uh, elsewhere in town because it still runs and makes power. <coughs> Which one is that? The, it's the, that's the smaller generator that they had up at the highway? Yeah. The old one, he said. It just but says he, he said it works good. He and said it still works. Not to be confused with the fire station yeah. one that's out in the back. Yeah. That doesn't work. So this is, see, because they bought, remember, we gave the money last year to buy a new one. So can we throw it back to Peter and to Ryan and ask the question of, do we need this in the town center to support the municipal vulnerability, whatever, mm -hmm. that okay. do we need additional power here at, in the center? Yes, Peter's okay. gonna be taken care of, but that's Peter. And now we need to we need to think about this building and we need to think about okay. Yeah, yes. find out. Because because honestly that the generator that was down at the highway barn, it wasn't enough to run their electric doors, mm -hmm. but it would run um, a certain amount of their power, like bay lights and stuff yeah. like that, if we were selective about what we Get were mm -hmm. yeah. what we were hooking into here, we could probably have at least minimum capabilities around the computer yeah. servers and the lights. Um, well, I'm thinking if we have yeah. access to the second floor. That's true. So we now have a big room yeah. that, well, in well, case can, of a, an emergency. We'll see that, we have people up there and run, exactly. run some yeah. heat. But, so that, but that generator would at least run heat in minimal lights. Yeah, so let's, so, so, yeah. so can we we'll throw that one? We'll yeah. we can use Peter it, yeah. Here. All right. The one that came out? The one that got disinstalled from the highway? I'll keep going on to that. Okay, already. Uh, now we have something here from um, Emma Tebow is her name. She sent to Karen. She says, we are once again planning running out of summer 5K in partnership with the Rapscallion Brewery. And uh, she wanted to get a permitting process going as soon as possible. Same as last year, we, we will be running up from Arnold Road and Sturbridge yep. and across uh, Rice Corner Road. Yep. Which, yeah. Motion, motion, motion. to approve their motion use. Second. All in yeah. favor? Aye. And they just, just need to make sure Mike knows. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think he does, but I'll yeah. double check yeah. and see sure he does. All righty. So they should have... make it, they should, they should change the route and go from one brewery to our new one. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> You can suggest that. Actually, yes. <laughs> Seriously, it'd be about the right distance. Instead of yeah. running in a circle, they could go from one to the other yeah. and make it our own rural yeah. beer crawl or pub crawl. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do I have a motion to adjourn at 7.48? You do. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye.